Today we're doing five more types of old photos to look for that can sell on eBay and elsewhere and how you might keyboard them. So the first category is uniforms and the first thing you might think of is Civil War uniforms and a lot of the photos from this era are tintypes which are photos printed on a sort of metal substrate and they look kind of like this. This is a really small one. Um, it's a gem tintype, which I have a whole video about, which you can check out with the link. These are plentiful, but they're getting expensive. People kind of know what they are and will charge more for them. So you may or may not be able to find stuff like this when you're looking for Civil War uniform soldier people, but you're more likely to find stuff like this. This is also a small portrait photo of a Civil War soldier, and this is a carte de visite, or one of these little uh, photos like you might get a whole bunch made and give to your loved ones. They were also common at the time. This photo uh, shows some pretty decent keywords. We have Civil War, Private, soldier. Those are all good. Um, they know that he's a private through the uniform, I would assume, and this is something you can research in depth. Um, and they also have uniform and CDV photo. These are all good keywords. If they knew anything else, it would be great to add that, like where he was from, um, even Union. It doesn't look like there's anything on the back, so they may not know more. Uh, this is a photo that you could totally find in a lot of photos and would sell pretty well. This is actually one of my sales, and this photo I just found in a lot, and luckily it had some nice captions on the back, so I knew. <laughs> which I put in sideways for some reason. So I knew the date, the name of the person, and what the uniform he is wearing is, and how old he is. So I put all of that in the title as keywords, and I don't know if that sold it, like somebody was looking for something about the Knickerbocker Grace, whatever those were, um, or if they were looking for his name, or if it's just a cool photo and they liked it, or it's a kid with a sword anyway. But that the more you know about the details, um, the better, and stick it into the keywords. Here's another kind of uniform. This is um, women in Salvation Army uniforms. Don't put all the title in all caps. It's just hard to read and shouty. Women's Salvation Army might go up front might be better. Photo is good, but old. Antique, is it vintage? It is in this case antique. I would say this is 1890s, late eight, 1890s from their clothes. So I'd get that in there, you know, with a circa. Social history. This is the same seller who always puts in social history. It's kind of interesting, but I just don't know if people search for it. And again, using up space to put in your skew. Not ideal. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but I'd rather use the space for good keywords and put this in the actual skew field where buyers can't see it. And this person is in a Mason uniform, and I believe this is the same seller, so they've got the similar issues that I was just talking about. But again, Masons, Masonic, put that up front. Now, I assume because this person is from Britain that it's northeast of England, but I'd be more specific. I mean, this is showing up on eBay US, so maybe, you know, put northeast England. Um, it appears this is actually a postcard, which, you know, technically I'm not really covering in the series so much, but since it's a real photo, we'll count it for now. This could go in a photo category like they have at Photographic Images, or it could go in the Masonic category, which is under fraternal organizations, and people definitely collect that stuff, so that could be another way to go. Here we have newer military portraits. 
and these I assume are World War II. So definitely get that in there, World War II. Or I mean, it could be it could be a little later. I don't know, but whatever it is, um, could be Korea. I guess it looks like World War II to me. Um, I'm not very knowledgeable about uniforms. I have to look this stuff up every time, but it is look upable. So I would get that in there. Do we know anything about who they are? Is Victory Studio interesting? Where is that? Is that in an identifiable place? That would be good to get in there. I would say World War II soldier portraits, US military uniforms, to portraits circa 1944 or whatever. Another type, these are more candid and they are policemen. This is great because they, we know they're New York, uh, New York police. We put in the badge in the precinct. Could be relevant. I would assume people have connections to those places and search for them. Leave off that <laughs> number sign if we're being picky here. I would stick New York PD police men in uniform up front. What's on the back? Oh, 1943. Put that in there. Here's another um, type of thing. This is again World War II, but this is British, RAF. Oh, there's all kinds of info on the back. Frank Henry, taken at the end of 1948, born blah, blah, now officially presumed killed. His mother, Sylvia, died suddenly. Okay. So this is great information. I would put in Frank Kearney, World War II, or WW2, RAF, 1942, presumed dead. And I guess Oldham is the place. I don't see any info there, but I would put that if it's the place. And again, uh, no all caps. <laughs> Sorry to be a broken record on that one. It's just needless. And we have some Wehrmacht soldiers in the Russian winter. And this person knows specifically what this uh, camo uniform is, which is good. I would get rid of the asterisks. Number two can go in their skew instead of here, the parentheses and stuff. And rare, uh, it's not, I don't think that's gonna really help you, but if it, if you have room for it at the end, maybe, but not in all caps with an exclamation point at the front. Um, the uh, Wehrmacht soldier is good. This camo splitter tarn uniform is good. Russia winter. I assume this is what World War Two. So get that in there. Military guy, soldier, smoking uniform, Russian Soviet army. So you probably know what I'm going to say. I don't, <laughs> military guy probably isn't that important <laughs> to get in there, though it's kind of funny. Um, I would put Soviet army circa 1950s, soldier smoking in woods, candid, stuff like that. Getting Russia in there is fine but Soviet is probably the key word here. If you could glean anything about his rank from the uniform, that would be great. The next category is specific countries. And I know when I say specific countries, you probably want a list of specific countries, but I don't really have that list. I can say that photos of China, historic photos of China do really well, and countries that don't exist anymore on today's map. Events in countries at historic periods can be good. Unusual things that are characteristic of that country in some way for good or ill or whatever. For example, we have a whaling ship in Asia, probably Japan. The Japanese whaling industry is a, you know, a subject of controversy and interest. So that's where I think that comes in here. And this photo is really gross, actually. <laughs> I didn't quite notice before these poor whales being killed. Here's Croatia, a country that doesn't exist in the same form anymore, the former Yugoslavia. 
and these appear to be the kind of photos that come in a little kit like a souvenir which usually aren't really worth that much in the same way that those fold out postcard folder things aren't but in this case being a so-called obsolete country gives it something that it might not otherwise have you know it's an interesting little set probably though I'm assuming I don't really know that may be different now after the situations that have gone on in these places. So although it does say split and I don't know if that means something in um, a language I don't speak, but I, I want to put that first. I think the most important thing is where this is, which is <laughs> a word I don't know how to say. Harovska. It's probably not how you say it. Croatia. Um, I might say former Yugoslavia. I would love a date in here, even if approximate, even if it's like mid-century. I don't think split is that important unless I'm missing something culturally here. I might say that it's a set. I, I would love more specifics in these keywords. Here we have East Berlin, another place that doesn't exist. Well, it exists. It just isn't called that. I love that this is a woman in a telephone box. That's great. East Berlin, Germany. I might say woman in telephone box because you don't notice her at first and I think she's a cool part of the photo. And um, this I think says leaving the American quarter. So does that mean we're in the American quarter? If so, that should be in there. I mean, it's good they got the border. A date would be good. 50s maybe from her purse. Hard to say border guards, this motorbike, those might all be good things to point out. All right, this is a different kind of place that doesn't exist anymore. So this is the Warsaw Ghetto, and this really overlaps with the ethnicities and culture topic we'll talk about at some other time, but I wanted to just throw it into the places that don't exist anymore topic because it's also one of those. I'm not sure why it says archive photo. The keywords, I would stick World War II, Warsaw Ghetto all up in the front. I would definitely put in that these guys are Jewish, maybe courtyard or plaza, there's kids, all of that could go in these keywords. Nobody's searching for two old men in a yard, <laughs> but they might be searching for for Jews in the Warsaw ghetto or, you know, topics like that. And this is a really interesting photo and I feel like it could have sold for more if it was found by the right people. Macau is definitely a place to look for photos from. Um, all of the Chinese territories or things that were part of China and are now not or vice versa, all are um, of interest to collectors. Get Macau, China up front. I think this could be more specific about it being like a harbor or a port. The railroad construction's good, but I think you could get more specific things in here that would interest people. Um, again, is this an identifiable place like the harbor or something? Um, and like, what are these? Are these containers or loading dock or something like that? I feel like there could be more specifics in here. Yeah, there's date. That's good. Typhoon. Oh, see, look, it's not even construction. It's a typhoon that made this big mess, presumably. All right, that needs to go in there. Disaster photos is kind of another genre, like it or not. So that could um, also be a way to keyword this. The next topic is albums. So if you find an album for sale at a estate sale or antique store auction or wherever, you can choose to either pull out the photos and sell them singly or in batches, or you can sell the whole album. And sometimes selling the whole album is really cool. 
and it will do well for you especially if they're if they're annotated and you know who the family is or where it is or there's a sort of story to be told in the progression of pictures anything like that and I've seen some amazing albums not mine <laughs> I've had some good ones but I've seen other people's amazing albums that really really tell a story and go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars but there's also more basic ones like this is um, you know 1860s ish and the person selling it has properly put in that it is Civil War era and that's um, a great keyword to have up front. I might write Civil War era album up front. Um, the album in and of itself is kind of cool and that's another thing about them we'll talk about more later. You can, And they say there are 14 plus tintype and CDV antique photos. Okay, so this is a CDV, this is a CDV. Let's see, are there tintypes? There's a tintype, there's some tintypes. I might have put the tintypes as the first picture because they are more desirable. That's a nice eerie photo there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I might have put a, a tintype first in this photo, maybe they should have taken out. And this one they should have turned not that I don't do that all the time but they're showing the condition of the of the actual album and I think the dating is spot on with 1860s here so on the whole their keywords are pretty good um, I would just change the order a bit and feature the tintype as the first a tintype as the first photo here is an album like I was talking about that has more captions and tells more of a picture. So when I have these, I like to actually make a video of them and I think that really helps sell it. Um, I think it's great they got the name in here, they got that there's basketball team, the number of pictures in here, um, high school photo album, okay, if that's what it is. but. I might get in there that there's cars, um, there's a, like a policeman in uniform, and this is just sort of a middling example of the kind of things like this you can find that can do really well as albums. Here's another one, 1940s to 70s family trips. So. You know what I'm going to say, all of this punctuation and these plus plus pluses, just take them out and use better keywords in those places. Um, I'd say 40s hyphen 70s instead of two. Um, we don't need vintage 1940s and 40s to 70s. And I would say family photo album 40s, 1940s to 70s trips. I don't know what else can be found out about this. It would be great to know the place or the name, any family last names, smart dogs and proud of them. Oh, so here we have um, <laughs> prize winning Irish setters at Birdl Bridlington. So that could be a clue, but I might put in the <laughs> Irish setter show dogs that could be interesting to people here's another album black America 1940s okay first of all <laughs> put some pictures first not the album not the cover that's not the part that's exciting I mean it's fine but what's cool is these photos of black people in America in when is this the 40s yeah and that is interesting and so are these cute little drawings I might put something about that annotated with drawings and you know all the things I was saying like do we know where this is what the family's name is anything like that 
there's a school maybe there's you can see the name of it at some point um, so that kind of stuff I feel like this should have sold for more they, and maybe unless this is all there is they should have shown more of the album here's a an album from Japan and again doesn't look very annotated so I don't know how much you can find out about it but super interesting for the reasons that all albums are and also because it's from a culture outside of the US which could be interesting for lots of reasons it has a nice uh, Japanese binding so in terms of this uh, title sepia I don't think is legit <laughs> first of all I mean maybe these photos are sepia but that's just how they're toned it's not really I don't even think it is I don't even think they are but I think I wouldn't waste space with sepia or this comma or this slash I would have photo album Japan 90 plus photos hopefully you could glean some kind of date um, looking through this and I don't know maybe a place I'm not sure there might be some photos you could figure out where they were taken by what's in them I'm not sure but I would definitely get family photo album it's very like seems very family oriented here is a wedding album Connie and Sammy <laughs> Our wedding. I wonder if they know the last name. That would be great to get in there. And it's Sunny, <laughs> not Sammy. Oh no. I don't know if these are large, like what size this album is. If these are bigger pictures, not snapshots. It would be cool to put something about that in, but they might just be snapshots. Yeah, maybe wedding album family maybe like black family would be nice that's kind of your typical wedding photos it's nice though here's another album and this one is kind of cool for the album itself which is something we'll talk about later foreshadowing but i would definitely put some photos up front not front load it with all those um, pictures of the exterior and this is again Civil War and they are portraits of men women and children she's civil their Civil War that woman on the right is a little later I think she's a little later so yeah I would put Civil War and later maybe um, or Civil War through 1880s something like that other than that I think these are pretty good Civil War era um, 40 plus antique photo so I might put Civil War era album Civil War through Civil War to 1880s um, photo album 40 plus with the plus sign portraits 40 plus portraits nice binding something like that <laughs> oh look at the gilt edge that is nice okay here's one more um, India 1946 so this overlaps the countries category and the albums category and I feel like this one tells a bit of a story um, are these women nurses yeah so it's military and I might put something about being about nurses or medical maybe some of the towns Himalayas and these the names of some of these towns that are in here yeah World War two is that a tank or an armored vehicle I might put that in there 
These look like really interesting photos. And also what, <laughs> what army is it? Is it the British army? I would get that in there too. The next topic is sports. So as you might guess, uh, many photos of different sports can sell really well. We're starting with boxing as it's sort of a classic thing to photograph. You know I'm going to say put this rare antique vintage stuff further into the listing and maybe skip the rare. I would put bare knuckle boxing first. I'm not sure why they've put American. Are they not American? No, they're from Massachusetts. I would put bare knuckle boxing, put in something about the era, which I don't know what it is. This could be like 20s to 40s, maybe early 20th century would be fine. I don't know, I would put in something about that guy's leg muscles. <laughs> Indeed. And I see, look, they put it on auction and got one bid for their asking price. I might have put it up for higher and then taken an offer for down to $19.99, but why not try selling it for, you know, $34 or something. Here's another boxing photo. I just threw this in here. Well, first of all, this is a famous boxer, so that's kind of a different topic as we're talking about things you might find any day, every day. I just thought it was interesting because it's a really bad photo in so many ways <laughs> of a famous person, but it's still sold, granted, with these ones that are somewhat more recognizable that kind of look like they are taken from a TV, though I could be wrong. But yeah, the colors faded, it totally not fast enough um, shutter speed or film to capture this in the light level and it's really blurry, but I kind of like that they put surreal in there as a keyword. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I don't know if it was the right way to go, but I just thought it was interesting. See what you can sell. Like I might've pulled this photo out as not being sellable, but sure enough. Of course, boxing isn't the only sport. This is football and it's not even football. It's the marching band, um, Ohio State University football stadium marching band that those are all the keywords that should be up front i think ohio is implied by ohio state university and i would love some kind of indication as to the year and maybe also the back of this photo i can't it might be a polaroid i can't really tell and here's another football photo but this is just not even in a game or near a game necessarily but he is in old-timey football uniform 1920s and that's a great topic to look for here we have kind of the same thing but in the 70s boy in his football uniform and this as we were talking about in the last photos video there's something about some of these 70s photos that is just delightfully kitschy at this distance in time so the car and the neighborhood and her hair and the fact that this is a land camera Polaroid and it's all messed up, everything. It's just very characteristic or nostalgic of that era. So these are great to look for, even though they might seem kind of new and like, you know, ephemeral. Uh, we got some more football. Again, just some boys in their old timey, but not as old timey as the other ones uniforms. You can see an old car next to them, old cars next to them. It seems like they're playing in out in the farmland somewhere. I might get rid of some of this stuff. I don't know what it means and get some of that in there. The farmland, the old cars, the, I got, they have the 1940s. You don't need a, an apostrophe in here. You can just stick the S right on there. <laughs> some baseball. I just wanted to show this because it's a photo of this woman's head, but somehow it's poetic. Like you can see some baseball. I'd like to, to know what stadium or city this is. I would put the date 
after the teams, but no big deal. And I think snapshots appropriate here because there is something delightfully candid about this <laughs> picture. I mean, you really get the sense of being in the stands and seeing this woman's head instead of the action. Another baseball, where it is, the team, the stadium, the, the uh, year or dates. And again, that like candidness, I might put Coca-Cola sign just because but this is another sort of like throwaway photo that is great to sell. And then there's other sports like auto racing of all sorts. This is great, just the whole setting and the outfits and the fact that this is supposed to be a speedy car and it's like everyone's just standing around as it goes by. Maybe it's stopped, I don't know, but. So yeah, car racing of different kinds, all kinds of racing of different things. And our final topic for today is what we will call gay interest. I'm not sure how this became a thing on eBay, but it is definitely a thing on eBay and has been for a long time. So the keyword is gay interest. It's two words. And this is for photos of two or more men that are in any way showing some sort of affection towards each other or even mild interest in each other or are near each other or for individual or groups of men that are shirtless or are beefcakes or otherwise sexy. That's what you use it for. <laughs> I think that shirtless, mustache, um, trunks, beach though, is this the beach? I don't know are all probably good keywords. I, I guess he has a hairy chest. If so, that's, I guess, legit. See, look, this sold for $49. It's another one. These seem to be the keywords that people are using lately. Um, besides gay interest, men, affectionate, hug. If that's what people are using, that leads me to believe it might be what people are searching for, though I can't back that up with scientific data. Affectionate young men, field of flowers, gay interest, snapshot, blah, blah, blah. This one sold for $66. This is a nice photo. Um, here's an overlap of boxing, which we were talking about, and gay interest. 30s is good sexy men play boxing, swimsuits, male physique. This one I think should have sold for more, maybe. But that's just because I really like 20s and 30s photos, <laughs> maybe. Here's one of these uh, sort of beefcake ones <laughs> or, or sexy guy ones. So this doesn't really make sense exactly. Affectionate, handsome, young man, cute face, male, shy guy, vintage, old photo, gay interest. I feel like these are like the words you use to search for porn, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure affectionate really makes sense if it's just like one guy, though this could be one of these cases of it's like a coded way people are finding things. Not sure, but handsome young man. I might put something about like hippie, long hair, muscly arms. And then we have this obvious beefcake and I would get rid of all of that. I mean, you can put the size, but it's better in the description, I think, or condition and use your keywords for something better. Handsome trunks bulge, like handsome trunks bulge. I might, I guess bulge is a legit keyword for this topic, but I might, um, you know what? This is fine. I might put the words in a different order, but I'm sure this worked quite well. Here's another one, more modern. Again, I would get rid of the long skew number. I might put in something about sunbathing. You can always use the numeral too instead of spelling it out. I might put something about blonde men, sunbathing, tan men, by ocean, stuff like that. Here's some more. 
again, you can use the numeral two. I don't think there's really a bulge in this picture. That's really keyword stuffing, <laughs> so to speak. Trunks is legit. I might put that they're older. This is totally like a father and son or something, but, or two brothers, but that's okay. It doesn't matter if they're actually demonstrably, provably gay. Um, I would put something about being older. This is really cool, this building, like lur lurking above them. Shirtless is fine, bathing, um, beach, that sort of thing. Here we have another individual, again, with the bulge, come on, there's no bulge in this picture, but, or affectionate, but I would put um, something about bare chest, shirtless, muscled, um, long hair, beret, <laughs> what is that hat? I don't know. Here we have three shirtless chaps. So I wonder if this is military with these tents, but I, I'm not sure that could go in the keywords. Um, there again, with the, the keyword stuffing with the bulge, uh, affectionate, I guess can work here. I might put that these are young guys, young men, and there is no trunks. These are pants. Yeah. I think you could be more accurate with these keywords. Okay. This is all the same seller in Ukraine and they just use the same keywords for all of their titles, which I guess if it works, that's great, but they might be able, I don't know. They might be able to sell more specific photos to more specific people if they use more specific keywords. So, you know, this guy's blonde, he's shirtless again with the trunks, etc. Um, seems to be with some grapevines. Maybe that's kind of interesting. The, a date might be interesting. 1964. I can't read Russian script or Ukrainian. I don't know which that is. And finally, I really like this photo. I think I might have bid on this if I had seen it. Well, you know what I would do here. I just wanted to show you this photo because I really liked it. You know how I would fix these keywords. <laughs> And that is all for today. There are more types of photos to look at and talk about, and those will come in future videos. Please let me know if you find this interesting or useful and check out some other videos about photography and thank you.